I'm Ole Big Glenn. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Couple of topics on this uh, blog today. First one I want to talk about is the skyrocketing costs of renovating condos or, or homes these days. Now, renovation costs and the time you need and the permits and everything else has always been a lot of work. A lot of time, a lot of work, and a lot of money. But I've been talking to a number of renovators here, including the guy that uh, did, has done a couple of my personal renovations on some of my homes. And uh, I also follow some builders down in Southern California. And maybe, I know I've got some builders that follow my blog here. Maybe you guys could comment here too about the skyrocketing costs of both material, labor, uh, uh, of course the delays with permits and everything else. And, and what I see is this starting to add even another layer of increased costs onto things like Vancouver condos or Richmond condos or even de renovated detached homes. So I'll give you a couple of examples here following a builder down in Southern California. And from what I understand, I mean, they've got the same situation we do here. No inventory, way more buyers than there are sellers. Uh, they're trying to build more homes, but it's getting difficult. Some of the reasons it's getting difficult is the material cost. This guy was talking about buying wood, lumber, eight by eight pieces of wood that he used to pay $12 for have now gone up to $60 a piece. And I've heard this story on a, from a number of different sources here. Wall Street Journal was talking about this as well. The skyrocketing cost of materials, flooring, wood, glass, roofing materials have all gone up substantially. Now, I talked to uh, my main renovator, the guy that renovated my current house here about three years ago. He tells me the same thing. I mean, his quotes now are probably 15% more uh, than what they were when I had my renovation done three years ago. He also tells me that the lag time when he can get in is gotten long. So my renovator and contractor, uh, when I renovated my current place, I had to wait about six or seven months from the time I got in touch with him. We started on the design phase and everything else. It was about close to seven months before he was able to put a hammer into, into my place and start on the renovation. And then it was about another four and a half, close to five month reno. Getting, and getting all the permits all had to be done prior to that. He tells me now he's booking into 2022. It's at least 12 months, maybe even closer to 15, depending on what you want done. He was also telling me too, all his material costs have gone up substantially in the last six months. Uh, I also uh, had a, a colleague of mine telling me, and maybe some of you guys can back me up on this, I think I hear appliances, the prices have gone up, had a spike here of about 10% over the last three or four months. I would know I haven't bought any appliances in the last three years, but apparently those have gone up. So this is why I always tell people why real estate and look at it long term, why it will always go up guaranteed, guaranteed. You buy a house today, a detached house in Renfrew, or you buy a condo in Yale Town today and hold it for 20 years, it's going to be worth far more than what you paid for it. And the simple reason is twofold. A, we're not building any more land. We are restrained on how much land we have, especially in the lower mainland with the mountains, the water, and the agricultural reserve. You add to that the, the hoops you have to go through, especially in a city like Vancouver, to get anything built, get permits, zoning, and all that good stuff. So populations continue to grow, but land is locked. So for that reason, it will go up. And that's the main driver of appreciation is the dirt. It will go up, not in lockstep. There will always be corrections along the way. But when you look at real estate, the only way you should look at it long term it's going to continue to go up. But the other thing is the input cost, the building cost to build these homes. Things like concrete and rebar and steel and glass and the labor. We've always had a, uh, a skilled labor shortage here in the lower mainland. Those will also continue to go up, uh, at least to inflation, but uh, which is running at about well, 2%. But from what I'm hearing now and talking to my renovators and what I'm seeing online and reading, the input cost, the building cost, the material costs are going far up far more than the cost of inflation. So this will add to the long-term increases in real estate. Not, again, not in lockstep, step, but eventually it catches up to this. When materials are, and labor are going up by 20%, this will be uh, built into the price down the road eventually. 
just like the cost of securing land and building continually going up will so also. So something to keep an eye on, maybe if some of you guys in the construction business can, or renovation business can, can uh, comment on this. I'm hearing that we're getting a big spike right now in materials, labor, the timelines it's gonna to take to renovate, that will all add to the cost of real estate in the long run. Final, the second thing I wanna talk about, yeah, I've done a few blogs on this in the past, is rental restrictions, uh, pet restrictions, age restrictions. So every year I sell a couple of units that have an age restriction. I'm, o I'm always selling units out in the burbs and homes, uh, uh, townhomes and condos that might have a rental cap or no rentals. And I've talked about that. But every now and again, once or twice a year, I'll sell one that also has an age restriction. So I just listed a two bedroom, two bath condo. Uh, I listed this actually back in October. I fi finally sold it here uh, about a week and a half ago. So it was on the market for close to two and a half, three months actually. And, and uh, so it took me a while to sell it. This home had no pets allowed. Uh, uh, no rentals allowed, zero rentals, no, not even a, uh, you know, 10 allowed with a cap. It was no rentals period and had a 19 plus age restriction. So I've sold these type of homes before and uh, this home was in Richmond and uh, uh, would, I kind of call it, you know, a three strikes there. No pets, no rentals and the age restriction. The age restriction really is kind of a final hindrance on that unit. And it, these generally take me some time to sell. And just to give you an example, this was a tremendous strata, really well run strata. I have actually had a sale in this strata about 10 years ago, uh, been a long time. And this one uh, has been fully rain screened about three years ago. And the owners of this particular unit, it was about a $35,000 levy. Plus they took a bunch of money out of the contingency fund. So the siding was done, the balconies, the windows, uh, everything was in very good order, solid strata. But the age restriction is really the big hindrance here to, to, to a buyer and really eliminates a good percentage of your buyers. To give you an example, we'll just use for argument's sake, this unit sold for half a million dollars, 500,000. Took me almost three months to sell it, but it sold. If I were to transplant this strata across the street, same building, but without any rental restrictions uh, or age restriction, uh, this unit would have probably sold closer to 550, 560. So that is the cost. Now, I've done lots of blogs on it. There's no right or wrong. I know why people put an age restriction on there. And I also understand why some owners don't want rentals. I've done many blogs on it. But I often wonder though, if the owners of these stratas know the exact dollar amount they are leaving on the table. Something tells me a lot of them I don't think do. As I say, in this particular unit, I, I might even be underestimated. It might be closer to 75,000. Because again, this is a, was a prime strata. I see other stratas in the neighborhood that aren't nearly as good as this one. This, those buildings need, still need a lot of remediation work that are selling in the 530s, 540s and haven't even had the work done. So I often wonder if people realize that, uh, and especially when you have all three, no pets, no rental, and a 19 plus age restriction. Now, it's a bit of a gray area, these age restrictions, and maybe there's some lawyers that are watching my blog here, and you guys can let me know. But as far as I know, if someone were to, a young couple were to buy this condo, live in it, and then let's say three years later have a baby, as far as I know, and I'm not 100% sure on this, I don't think the strata can actually have these people sell the unit or leave now that they've had a baby because the baby was born while they were owners. I think with the human rights tribunal and everything else, I'm pretty certain that a, a young couple could buy this, have their first child, and they can stay. Now, it's a little different with pets and with rentals. I think the strata has a lot more power on those to enforce it. But maybe if someone could let, let me know, I've asked a few people and everyone is kind of wishy-washy on it. I really need to ask a lawyer about this. But I'm fairly certain, or at least what, from what I've heard, some people have told me is that somebody could buy one of these units at a very good price because it's got an age restriction, have a child, and I don't think it's in the strata's ability to have them move. But maybe someone could comment on it. But that's what, rental restrictions or, or sorry rental restriction and an age restriction the age restriction is kind of the big one that really is probably knocking at least 10 or 15 percent off your uh, market value on that 
I understand why they want to do it. Sometimes though, I, I'm not sure if all the owners understand how much money they're leaving on the table with it. And it is a much tougher sell for sure. If this unit didn't have all those restrictions, I would have had this sold in seven to 10 days, maybe even got multiple offers on it. Instead, it took me the better part of two and a half months to sell. I'm Owen Big Lane. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.